60 Minutes Rewind. We cannot explain what you are about to hear. Science doesn't know enough about the brain to make sense of Alma. Alma Deutscher is an accomplished British composer in the classical style. She is a virtuoso on the piano and the violin, and she is 12 years old. She's different from other prodigies we have known because at the age of 10, she wrote an opera which demands comprehensive mastery. Not just how to play the piano, but what is the range of the oboe? What can a cellist play? We don't know how she understands it all. It seems that Alma was born that way. What is your earliest musical memory? I remember that when I was three and I listened to this really beautiful lullaby by Richard Strauss and that was when I really first realized how much I loved music and I asked my parents, but how can music be so beautiful? Do you remember the melody? Yes. I, you want me to sing it? Please. Those notes of Richard Strauss ignited a universe. At three, Alma was playing piano and violin. When did the composing begin? When I was four, I just had these melodies and ideas in my head, and I would play them down at the piano. Um, and sometimes my parents would think that I was just remembering the music that I'd already had before. But I said, no, no, these are my melodies that I composed. This past summer in Austria, we watched Alma prepare her violin concerto and the premiere of her piano concerto. Joji Hattori conducts the Vienna Chamber Orchestra. And maybe just a clarinet. Just a clarinet. Yeah. What I really want to hear is a violin and the clarinet. That night, the soloist was the composer herself. And as you listen, remember, she wrote all the notes for all the instruments. could see Alma was living a story. A story of loss. A story of redemption. Scales of emotion beyond a child. And yet her vision was almost like wisdom. Do you have any idea where this comes from? I don't really know, but it's really very normal to me to go around walk around and having melodies popping into my head. It's the most normal thing in the world. For me, it's strange to walk around and not to have melodies popping into my head. So if, if I was interviewing you, I would say, well, tell me, Scott, how does it feel like not having melodies popping into your head? <laughs> it's very quiet in my head, I, I must say. <laughs> oh, but it appears never quiet in hers. Look what happened when we took a break from filming at the Deutscher home. Never mind the background noise, that's just the rustle of lunch. This is idle Alma. When she has nothing to do, the music flows from its mysterious source as fluently as breath.
Do you feel that there's anything about Alma's gift that you don't understand? Her parents, That's Guy and Janie, are professors. She teaches old English literature, and Guy is a noted linguist. Both of them are amateur musicians. We don't understand creativity. Does anyone? I mean, um, that, I think that's the crux of the mystery. Where does it come from, this melody is popping into your head? I mean, it really is a volcano of, of imagination. It, it's, it's almost unstoppable. It was Guy who taught her how to read music. I thought I was an amazing teacher because, um, you know, I hardly had to... <laughs> you thought it was you! <laughs> I thought it was me. I hardly had to say something. And, she, you know, a uh, piano teacher once said, it's difficult to teach her because one always has the sense she's been there before. I mean, she wouldn't be able to imagine life without dreams and stories and music. That's as unimaginable to her as it is strange for other people to think about a little girl with melodies in her head. I love getting the melodies. It's not at all difficult for me. I get them all the time. But then actually sitting down and developing the melodies, and that's really the difficult part, having to tell a real story with the music. The story Alma tells in her opera is Cinderella, but it's not the Cinderella you know. It seemed demeaning to Alma that Cinderella was attractive just because her feet were small. So she cast Cinderella as a composer and the prince as a poet. Cinderella finds a poem that was composed by the prince and she loves it and she's inspired to put music to it. And in the ball, she sings it to the prince. that it makes much more sense if he falls in love with her because she composed this amazing melody to his poem because he thinks that she's his soulmate because he understands her. Well, people can fall in love with composers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think this may be one of those times. <laughs> they fell in love with Cinderella in its first production in Vienna. There is another composer who had an opera premiere in Vienna at the age of 11, Mozart. People compare you to Mozart. What do you think of that? I know that they mean it to be very nice to compare me to Mozart. No, it could be worse. Of course I love Mozart and I would have loved him to be my teacher. But I think I would prefer to be the first Alma than to be a second Mozart. The story will continue after this. In Israel, Mozart joined Alma on stage. She played his piano concerto with a cadenza. In a cadenza, the orchestra stops and the soloist breaks away in music of her own making. It's something that I composed because it's a very early concerto of Mozart. And the cadenza was very simple, it didn't go to any different keys. And I composed quite a long one, going to lots and lots of different keys, doing lots of things on Mozart's motifs. So you improved the cadenza of Mozart? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of a comet that goes by and, and uh, everybody looks up and, and just goes, wow. Robert Yertigan is a professor of music at Northwestern in Chicago. He has been a consultant to Alma's education. I sent her some assignments when she was six, seven, uh, where I, I expected her to crash and burn because they were very difficult. It came back, it was, it was like listening to a mid-18th century composer. She was a native speaker. A native speaker? It's her first language. She speaks uh, the Mozart style. She speaks the style of Mendelssohn. And the names that you just mentioned are the ones that live for centuries. Yes. She's batting in the big leagues, and if you win the pennant, there's immortality. The route to immortality leads through California. In December, the San Jose Orchestra will stage Cinderella in Alma's American debut. She'll be the belle of the ball on the piano, organ, and violin. 
The piano music teachers say, oh, you must choose the piano. And the violin music teachers say, oh, you must choose the violin. But anyway, that's better than the piano teacher saying, you must choose the violin. And the violin teacher <laughs> yeah, say, Yeah, that, that would be a bad sign. That would yeah. be a bad sign, yes. <laughs> Fortunately, she doesn't have to choose. This is her composition, Violin Concerto Number no. 1. It's extremely jolly and very happy and jocular, that movement. I want to make the people who listen to it laugh and be happy. Um, the first movement of the violin concerto is quite the opposite. It's very dark and dramatic. What does a girl your age know about dark and dramatic? Well, yes, that's an interesting question because, you know, I'm a very happy person, so I have lots of imaginary composers. And one of them is called Antonin Yellowsink. Antonin Yellowsink, Alma's imaginary composing friend, is an insight into the music of her mind. Alma told us that she made up a country where imaginary composers write, each in his own style of emotion. So how many composers do you have in your head? I have lots of composers. And sometimes when I'm stuck with something, when I'm composing, I go to them and ask them for advice. And quite often they come up with very interesting things. Even the real world seems magical. The Deutschers move to the English countryside to be near a famous school of music. Oh. Alma is privately tutored and homeschooled alongside her sister Helen, who also knows her way around the piano and the treehouse. I usually don't ask people your age this question, but what have you learned about life? Well, um, I know that, that life is not always beautiful, that there's, that there's also ugliness in the world. Um, that's why I, I've learned that I want to write beautiful music, because I want to make the world a better place. We cannot know how Alma Deutscher channels her music like a portal in time. But in a world too often ugly and too often overburdened with explanation, it is nice to take a moment and wonder. Mm -hmm.